And now it's time for me to bear the consequences of my actions. I thought that God was very, very bad, and I didn't serve him. Instead, I served communism. I feel sorry about the killings. We killed so many just like they were chickens. I guess I'll go to jail now, but that's okay. The killings need to be understood. The truth has to be known. The article asks the question, if you were somebody alive and your parents, and they have people, whose parents were killed by this man, whose children were killed by this man, could you as a Christian then forgive him? I guess the next question you've got to ask is, do you think God can forgive him? Do you think God has forgiven him, if indeed his confession was sincere? I believe so. <coughs> this man had given in to evolution without God, had given into a system that is based completely on survival of the fittest. That's really nothing more than evolution is. Survival of the fittest. It's just that in many communist or status regimes, they say, we're just going to speed up the process a little bit. We see a lot of people out here who are weak, or we see people out here who are an inferior race, or uh, people out here who are, uh, perhaps they, they are sick in some way or another. We're just going to speed up the process and take care of the weak. We're just going to cut them out so that we can create a much better society. So all of the names of creating utopia and a better society, let's take care of evolution. We'll give it a little hand. Fire up the gas ovens. Let's throw the weak and the unworthy in the gas ovens. It's really what it leads to. If there's a different system, there's a system who says that the strong's job is to love and not destroy the weak but to raise them up, to take care of them, to nurture them. Where do we get that desire in our hearts if there is no God? If it's all survival of the fittest, how come we know that that's wrong? And yet there's times in our society, there's times in our culture where we forget that message and we give in and we fire up the ovens. fire up the killing fields. Truth of the matter is, is that each and every one of us is completely capable of having a heart so dark and so dead and so devoid of light that we are capable of this kind of horror and atrocity. There but for the grace of God, though each and every one of us. Here's the blessing. God didn't make us for killing fields. God didn't make us for gas ovens. Didn't make anybody for killing fields or gas ovens. God, in his fullness and his richness and his joy, created an incredible place for us to live and to love him and love each other. And he speaks his word and sends his son, Jesus Christ, into the darkness. And he sends his Holy Spirit to hover over the darkness and to transform our empty, lifeless, dark hearts and fill us with the knowledge of the truth and with the knowledge of his love and transform us and make us a new creature and a new creation. That's what it's all about. I don't think Genesis is just about planets and galaxies. I think it's about also the mystery of the human heart. The Word of God speaks into us new life. If you haven't invited Jesus Christ into your heart, if you haven't been filled with that love and that light, don't waste any time. God created us in His image to join in the fullness and the love of the Holy Trinity. And he's invited us into that community. Don't waste any time. Amen.